chair. Oh no, I did not hit the right thing. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know what I'm doing. Share. There we go. Copy link. Okay. There we go. There we go. I'm not even all that late today. I could have been. Okay. Taylor, good morning. Taylor, how are you? You posted the video last night. I didn't see. Hang on. I'm going to go look. And it's just you here, so I can call you out. <laughs> um, That's right. Use my name. Moan it slowly. And I will take my time with you. Or scream it. And I shall ravish you hard. What are you writing on? You gonna take it? You gonna take that dick? Yeah. You gonna take that dick? Huh? I'm gonna pop off a piece of my dick. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> what were you actually typing on? Good morning. Good morning. think that was safe for work <laughs> that's your laptop is it really come on okay yeah we're gonna have to mute you this time my kids are home oh okay I guess it is all right yeah it looked like um, like one of those free write things for a minute there. Hello, Dale. I have a laptop and then an extra screen to have dual screens. Gotcha. My kids are home. I should have asked for a warning. I should have known because I know what you write. <laughs> but my kids are home because snow day. And they are so lucky. You scheduled your newsletter? Yay! Not your bad. My bad. I should have asked. I should have been like, is this something that I want my kids to hear? <laughs> I did not ask. It was totally my failure as a mom. You know where I did not fail as a mom? The fact that my nine-year-old who's about to turn 10, is upset that she can't go to school today. <laughs> and she just threw the garbage out. I'm so impressed with her. You good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still want my hair to grow, but I kind of want it to look like my bangs where it's just straight. I will even out your bangs. They don't look bad. They're just not straight, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll let your hair grow, okay? I'm on board. All right? Mm -hmm. I love you. Elementary school is cool. I'm upset I can't go to elementary school today. It's amazing what cleaning a room and desk off will do for your mood and motivation. Spent all day yesterday organizing and cleaning. Really? See, that just makes me tired. But I'm so glad it works for you. It does. I hate cleaning. I like things that are clean. Does that make sense? It 
probably doesn't, but. Hi, Shannon. You're having a snow day there too. Half the clinic I work at is closed because of road conditions. Wow. Connor was throwing a fit this morning. I want my mom. One of his teachers had to take him off of me. Aww. What, what's up? I don't know where my pencil sharpener is at the moment. Can it wait? I'm doing a live, live stream right now. Okay. I got to stop asking you that because you always say it can't wait. I can't do it right now because I'm live streaming and I don't know where my pencil sharpener is. Unless you bring me your pencil sharpener, I cannot sharpen that for you. Yours is up on your desk somewhere. It's the big pink one. Okay. <sighs> I like thing, things organized, but I suck at organizing a lot. Yes, exactly. I need a group of fairies in my house. One to clean, one to edit, one to do errands. I'll take them. No, you have to share that. <laughs> be a few days and my desk will be covered again. Sometimes the mess messes with my creativity. I feel that, yep. Hmm. She wants to look a little bit more like Wednesday, which is fine. I'm all for looking like Wednesday. But uh, she cut her own bangs last night. They're a little uneven. <laughs> the children are giving you errands again. I'm sorry. Okay. What's up? You're about to jump on me, aren't you? Yeah. Hi. Well, come on. Come on. I love that you let her cut her own hair. Well, <laughs> there was no letting about it. She did not ask me. Hit me out. Yeah, it's the floof. It's the gray floof. She did not ask me. She just came down with uneven hair and I went, what'd you do? <laughs> but actually I'm kind of impressed because when I was nine and trying to cut my own hair, it was not, like, it was, like, up here. You know what I mean? She still got it around here. It was just, it's just slightly uneven. Yeah. I want to write, but my mind keeps throwing me out the story, not letting me focus. Even sprints aren't keeping me in check. Any suggestions to help start surrounding yourself with reminders of your story? So whatever, like whatever your genre is, like if I'm writing werewolf, if I'm writing a werewolf story, I'm surrounding myself with werewolves. I'm putting werewolf posters and a Des uh, a wallpaper on my phone and a wallpaper on my computer and I'll watch like werewolf movies on Netflix or whatever, but I will surround myself with that genre. Okay, their breakfast is here. Um, because then everywhere you look is a reminder of you're supposed to focus, you're supposed to focus. And I got that from when I, fr when I got diagnosed with ADHD, and I started going to like, because I can't take medication for it because high blood pressure and all that. 
Um, but I started like, you know, going to a counselor at first and then like reading up books and stuff like that. And one of the pieces of advice that kept getting repeated over and over and over again was carry physical reminders with you of what you're doing. So the example that they gave was if you're in the kitchen trying to clean the kitchen, don't leave the kitchen without a sponge. Because if you leave the kitchen to say, put the kitchen towels down in the laundry room, and then you're down in the laundry room and you're going, well, while I'm here, I may as well load up the laundry. That becomes the new physical reminder of what you're doing. And so then you start, well, I got to sort the laundry to get it in there. So then you start loading up the laundry room and now you've forgotten about the kitchen. And then there's a toy that's in the laundry room. So you're like, oh, I got to get this up to Piper's room. So you grab the toy and you run it up to your daughter's room. And now you're like two steps beyond away from the kitchen. You haven't finished that yet. All because one towel like led you down this rabbit hole. Because whatever you're holding, because of the whole object permanence thing, whatever you're holding becomes the physical reminder of what you're supposed to be doing. So instead, like carry around, I got a wrist strap that I put a sponge on. So whenever I'm, and I don't even use sponges because I can't stand the smell of sponges, which is why it worked out perfectly. Brand new sponge, just put a hole in it and, and now, and put a wrist strap on it. So now when I go to clean the kitchen, I've got that <laughs> hanging on my wrist. So when I come across a kitchen towel or something like that, I've got this reminder that I'm supposed to be cleaning the kitchen. Don't leave yet. And I put it in a laundry bag instead. And I like can go about what I'm doing. I applied all of that to my writing and started surrounding myself with reminders of the project that I'm working on. Seisha! You are heading full speed into hormone hell of adolescence. Oh, I know. I know. These kids are such better at the makeup and hair than we are. Yeah. I've cut my hair twice on my own and couldn't get it even and had to have my aunt fix it. I've been tempted to get bangs. I've been figuring out how to cut my own hair because Brad Mondo and the pandemic. Um, so I don't think I do too bad, but I'm not trying to do like specific styles. I'm just trying to like get it off my neck, you know, so. I wonder if the four bucket mode would work. I don't know. Cannot watch stuff as dark as I write. I can only read it. Surround yourself with books then. Well, surround yourself with book covers. I don't know if you can like sit down and read. I mean, I know you can, I know you can sit down and read. But what I mean is like when I sit down at my computer and I'm like, oh, I should check my email. So I'll shake the screen or whatever. And there's the reminder of my book of whatever project that I'm supposed to be working on, stuff like that. That is a little bit harder to do with books you read versus say being able to play a show on TV in the background or something like that. But maybe, unless maybe you're doing audiobooks, if you're reading audiobooks, maybe. Literally printing out pictures to stick around my desk now that remind me of my story. Could that be applied to writing? Ish. Yes. Yes, it can. Hang on. Let me get their breakfast from the porch because since they have a snow day today, I ordered breakfast for them. I will be right back. Come here, Floof. Yeah.
sorry, do you think I'm going to give this to you, Kat? Is that what you're thinking? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Come on. Ooh, I just knocked my charger right out of my phone. Okay, four buckets. We kind of already do this a little bit, Taylor. I got them eggs and pancakes, and I got meat and Diet Coke. Anyway, we kind of already do this a little bit, kind of. I just never called it four buckets before. But oh, I'm all out of breath, which is why I got a Diet Coke, and I've been on the treadmill because I'm always out of breath. Anyway, um... So that doesn't apply to external stimuli and keeping you focused on your writing. However, you've heard me talk about like brainstorming before and stuff like that, right? Put everything from your brain, download it onto a piece of paper, all these different ideas or whatever, and then you sort it after and you've got like you take your idea and you go, yes, this works for this book. Yes, I can apply this to this book. Nope, this goes in my grocery shopping list or this goes into the next book, or I don't know if this works or whatnot. It also, I also do that when I'm trying to delete a scene. If I'm reading a scene in my book and I'm like, this is just not working, but I don't delete anything. So I will take that and move it to, I have in my Google Doc setup, I have like the working draft and then I have my research folder. And then I have, I literally call it the recycle bin because I'm old. Um, so I call it the recycle bin. So, and that has documents in there, sometimes just one document, sometimes multiple documents where I took scenes from the book that I'm working on and I transferred them over there in case I ever have to go back to them or whatever. But you can apply the four buckets in that sense, if you're trying to write something and it doesn't go for that, but you have another whip in your head or whatever, and you're like, I got to get this out really quick. You can you can write it really quick and then move it aside so that you don't leave your own thing. You know what I mean? Or you do your character research, things along those lines. Uh, but it's not quite the same as having a physical reminder around you for the book that you're trying to work on. So I created an account for the 30-day challenge to see how... Other high epic fantasy authors do social media. I am failing. What do you mean you're failing? You are not failing. Hi. Seisha also got COVID for the sixth time. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I'm a very visual person, so making vision boards of things that remind me of my story helps keep me focused. Yes, you do that too. Good morning, true love. How are you? I was inspired to ask for another whiteboard for Christmas and got it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you do, do you need a six pack of uh, clipboard whiteboards? They're awesome. <laughs> Failing because now I have a lot of awesome pictures and D&D on the Instagram feed. I'm doing something wrong. Okay. It's easy to retrain. So head back over to Instagram, not right this second. You head back over to Instagram and basically try again. Start by searching for hashtags, right? Science fiction, book recommendations, um, who, who are you trying to look at again? Hang on. High epic fantasy. So search for like Lord of the Rings, fantasy books, fantasy book recommendations, book recommendations, fantasy. Um, don't do fantasy authors only because, I mean, yes, you're going to find the authors, but you're probably going to find authors talking to other authors. You're probably not going to find authors talking to readers. Um, so, but like do some of those searches and make sure you're really engaging. You don't even have to mean it, right? 
but make sure you're engaging with, like start liking a lot of those that are under those kind of hashtags. Start following some of the readers who are talking about those things. Maybe authors, follow some of the authors if they're talking to readers. But if they're talking to other writers, don't bother following them. Instead, follow other readers who are like treating it more like a book club kind of thing because that's what readers are actually going for. So just, and it only takes a couple of days it to retrain the, the algorithm and start showing you the things. It doesn't take very long at all. So you just go about it that way and kind of just retrain the algorithm. This is Dana. <gasps> Dana, my publishing BFF, how are you? Procrastinating or writing a technical presentation. Oh, here comes floof. I don't think vision boards for my RH would be a good idea in my house. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> okay, thanks. You're welcome. Algorithms, once you understand, once you understand a little bit more about the algorithm, honestly, it becomes so easy. You're like, okay, so I want to be able to do this. And it's like, you can just play with the algorithm a little bit. You can just go in and, and pretend to be someone else to get the whole algorithm to change for you. And then you can see what the algorithm is feeding that person so that you can figure out a little bit better what to hop on. Pictures. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that would be hard to explain to guests. And, but actually, not even an and, but think of the. Think of the satisfaction, that's a bad word, not that word. Think of the glee. Think of the glee you would have to know that you would probably mortify your teenagers during the whole process. Aim for some inclusivity, use cukes and bananas too. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dealing with arthritis, but have drugs now. But have you taken your meds, Sasha? My mother in law, two months ago, I made you this eggplant lasagna since you like eggplants so much. Ew. Stop it, Taylor. <laughs> A cornucopia of <laughs> plants. <laughs> I use mortification to motivate my son to stop skipping school. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't want to know. You're going to use mortification to like get me to work on time because <laughs> I'm going to end the live.
I feel so behind on the 30 day challenge. You're not behind. In fact, most of most of the days so far, they've been super short and pretty easy. It's like setting up. So day one through seven was basically setting up your, what would end up being your primary platform. So in the book, she uses Twitter. Mm. But most of us don't like Twitter anymore. X, Twitter doesn't exist anymore. It's now X, which is one of the issues. Um, but so a lot of us end up using TikTok. I used Instagram. I think a couple other people were using Instagram as well. So, but it's basically like, you know, day one, choose a name and sign up. Day two, optimize your profile. Day three, um, like super short. So you're not behind. Also, you can skip days. Like day five was, <clears throat> day five was to put together a basic schedule. Like that the best time to post is when you can post. Until you have data, it's whenever you can post. That should be easy, right? What's a time every day that you can post at least one post? Um, so, and if you have to skip that, because you don't, you know, because you don't have data, because you don't know, well, then you skip it. It's really easy to catch back up. I can't wait to buy all of y'all's books. Me, really? No, not you back in the corner. <laughs> you know what, Taylor? I'm still going to end up buying your book. I'm just going to hide it in a corner and... But I'm still going to end up buying it because you're in my group and I support every single one of you. I've been having problems re-signing back up via the Discord browser. Really? I wonder what's going on. I wanted to do the challenge, but doctor said no phone or keyboard and I am trying to behave. Doctor outranks me. TikTok kind of scares and intimidates me. Yeah, the thing that I can tell you about TikTok and why it's so popular is that it the when it came out. So Instagram came out and what became popular on Instagram was very pretty photos, right? Perfection, if such a thing exists. Um, but it was, you know on uh, the authors on TikTok. They were like very nice headshots, very pretty. Their desks looked immaculate, right? And you started seeing all these like stylized photos of like the white desk with the rose gold keyboard and the rose gold pen and the rose gold calculator and the rose gold phone and the rose gold computer screen and like the perfectly placed book and the rose gold teacup with, you know, the perfect amount of steam coming out. Like everything was all about pretty and aesthetic. And then TikTok came out and granted part of it, I think honestly people, people tell me that the reason TikTok blew up was because of the pandemic, but I don't think that that was it. I think that that was a coincidence and an accelerant, but people were sick of content being shoved at them and like everything on instagram especially as like content creators and inst and and uh influencers grew up on instagram like you couldn't just look at a pretty photo anymore it wasn't just like look at this sunset around me it was this sunset is sponsored by as it came up and tiktok came up when people were sick of that they just wanted to have fun and hang out and become social Again, they, they wanted conversation and connection. They wanted to like connect with other people who are going through the same things that they're going through, learning about the same things that they're learning about, and just talk. They just wanted to talk. That's where TikTok can also get intimidating because it's a little bit more raw, less studio. So that's where you become a little bit more vulnerable. But if you remember everyone else is in the same boat as you, 
and that that's what they want. They want to get to, to know the real you. They don't want the picture perfect thing. It's a little less scary. Make a checklist tracker and check off every day you do, and you can always circle back when with the days you skipped. Yep, that too. Pretty sure it's user error. <laughs> I don't know. Surrounds book with holy water and places in box with chains. <laughs> I loved your book. <laughs> Got on TikTok because my children bullied me in 2018 to join. <laughs> and now look at you. Now you're actually posting and using it for marketing. My kids are so lucky that school got canceled today. Because Christopher woke me up at 3 in the morning. 3 in the morning. Because um, he wanted to show me something. that he was, he was playing a game on his tablet and he wanted to show me something because he wasn't tired. And I said, you know, when you stay up all night, you still have to go to school the, the next day on time. You can bet I'm going to kick your butt right out the door. <laughs> And then they canceled school today. And I was like, <laughs> kind of stepped all over my toes there. Took forever for me to post. Mm -hmm. So I suck at making trackers, but I'll try it. Right now, just trying to get on word before power goes out again. Because weather. Mm. Even now when someone clicks my videos, I'm like, ew, why are you looking at me? But they're not looking at you. They're looking at the great big pink words you put on the screen. And they're trying to find out about your book. Now, if you're trying to do some thirst trap or something, that's different. <laughs> then you can be like, why are you looking at me? Oh, because I did a thirst trap. Okay, but come on, they're after your book. We are in for snow, rain, wind, storm day. Yeah, same. It's snowing right now. Pretty good. Cats are at the window chasing it. Who's that? Was that something here? That was weird. Discord won't let me resubscribe at the lower rate until next month because it says my original subscription is valid through the 28th. Okay. So, yeah. So, Discord doesn't do prorating. <clears throat> so, when you cancel the Word subscription, you still have access until whatever the last date of renewal would have been. So, until that actually cancels out, you can't re-sign up. You should still be able to do office hours, yeah. Did you see the amazing book cover Miranda made for me? Yes, it was amazing. You're subbing now? Oh, yay! Kimmy, just let me know the next time uh, the... The next time I share the link into the word for office hours into the word, if like something goes wrong, I'll make sure you get in there. She posted, Miranda posted a whole bunch of book covers and I was like, everyone's always asking me who I know for book covers. And I'm like, I don't know anyone. Go to Etsy. Here she is, freaking hidden, hidden gem right there in Discord. <laughs> kind of mad I didn't know. <laughs> Look. 
Thanks, you're welcome. You're not getting anything done right now. <laughs> I feel that in my soul, Dana. <laughs> also, same. <laughs> you have it as your phone background? Nice. Need breakfast and to run errands. Ugh. It's icky outside. Are you in a spot where it's not icky outside? I think it's icky from like from here to New England. What is today? Chocolate covered pretzels do not a sufficient breakfast make. <gasps> Bite your tongue. Yes, they do. <laughs> no, you're you are correct. Nine, January 9th is day eight. What are we doing? Day eight. You know where I messed up too is that I didn't start on January 1st, so I can never remember what day I'm on now. I keep thinking I skipped a day and I, or that I missed a day, and I didn't. It's because I started on the second for the 30-day book marketing challenge. Facebook, now meta. Ah, yes. Day eight is when you start setting up the secondary channel on Facebook. It's raining there. Aw. It looks miserable outside. I wish it was cold enough to snow. This polar vortex is supposed to send snow to Texas again. I've heard good things about Remarkable. We are preparing for 14 inches of snow. I don't think we're getting... I don't think we're getting 14. But now I am curious what we are getting. Storms in progress. I know. I can see it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I read that. <laughs> I, they have a little pop-up that I read completely wrong. It's like, go ad-free for, like, the Weather Channel, like, premium or whatever. But when I read it, I read, get interrupted winter storm coverage and I was like why would I want interrupted storm coverage that makes no sense how many inches are we supposed to get I don't know it's telling me five inches in the next in the next 12 hours, so. But they shut down schools, which I wasn't expecting. Oh, 
Okay, total snow accumulation, six to nine inches expected with winds up to 40 miles an hour. That's what we're getting. Send that vortex up here. <laughs> Done, you got it. <laughs> oh, yay! Oh, done, yay! Woohoo! Yep, Stacia has a remarkable. I'm jealous. I cannot justify getting a remarkable, though, because I just got as one of my, my, my husband left me, so I'm going to buy myself a present, presents. Um, I got an iPad two years ago. And I'm like, every time I look at the Remarkable, I'm like, but I have my iPad. I don't, I can't get a Remarkable because <laughs> I have an iPad. Good morning, Sabrina. I'm in my bed comfy and my puppy comes and burrows her way in my lap. I put my laptop on her thinking she'll move. No, she doesn't care. <laughs> she'll move when you don't want her to. Like after like 10 minutes when you're like, okay, all right, she's not going to move. I guess I'll just go about my business and just do this thing. That's when she's going to move. What is a Remarkable? It is, it's a tablet that has the feeling of paper when you write on it. And you can like, I don't know, ask Sasha. <laughs> she's snoring. <laughs> I have this itch like right here on my glasses and I hate scratching right here because I do that to my glasses, but scratching above it and below it just wasn't working. Got a baby girl on my lap sleeping. Oh, All right, well, I am about done with coffee, and we've gotten to that part of the live where I'm just staring at the screen. So, are there any other questions on writing or publishing or editing or anything along those lines? Anyone struggling with anything? don't have enough on my timeline, I think. Are you starting to put together a plan, Taylor? Max words for self-publishing a high fantasy book. Like max words, like where KDP will shut you down and say, no, nope. I want to say it's what? It's 800 pages, which is whatever that is times 250. There's your max words. Um, otherwise, technically, there is no max words. There's like, don't even worry about it, especially while you're writing. Word count means nothing while you're writing. It, that is something for editors to worry about. Um, when you're writing, you use as many words as you need. And then when you're editing, you cut them down to exactly what you need and not one word more. A Remarkable is a tablet and it feels like writing on paper. You cannot access email or the internet or anything distracting, just your tablet and a pen. 
Don't say it too loud. The plan might run away and hide again. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Timeline. You know what? Taylor, try Aeon. A-E-O-N. You might hate me for it. But Aeon is like a really great timeline. Like it puts together your timeline into like a Gantt chart and it like does character tracking and stuff. You have to plug the things in. But like if you go and pants your way down whatever avenue your eggplants are on and then you go back into Aeon and you plug in the information, it helps track your characters and stuff through like putting together a timeline. A-E-O-N, yeah. How long should I allow for editing? So that's going to depend a little bit on the editor you hire, the length of your book, how, you know, the type of editing you get, things like that, right? So depending on what you're doing, first off, remember, send like chapter seven to the editor you're interviewing so that they have a relatively accurate view of your book. Don't send them the first chapter because the first chapter is almost always deceptively clean <laughs> compared to the end of the book, right? So something like chapter seven right in the middle. And then they'll be able to, and then like when they talk to you, make sure you're accurate in telling them what you need. Um, do not, like I cannot stress this enough. Do not tell the editor, well, I don't know what I need. So you just tell me what you think because that puts the editor in a really awkward position where what they think might be one thing, but then they get into the middle of it and they realize like, oh, this was not what I told her she needed. Now, you know, now I'm finding out she needs something else. Like discuss it, go back and forth. If you're not sure what you need, they'll ask you some leading questions to be like, okay, well, how do you feel about your reader? Do you understand your reader? How do you feel about your market? So they'll they'll be able to like draw it out of you if you're not sure, but make sure you are telling them what you need. Um, and then I would say it's usually about two to three months is fair. I know a lot of editors who can work a lot faster than that. Um, and I know a lot of editors who work slower than that. But again, it depends on length and everything else. But I would say if you're going to budget for time, three, two to three months is usually kind of fair for a ballpark. And if you're talking self-editing, give yourself way more time, way more time. Like if, if uh, hiring an editor would take two months, give yourself six because you have to take regular breaks to create that distance between you and your manuscript. And then you have to find ways to get some sort of feedback, beta readers, alpha readers, sensitivity readers, et cetera, to help compensate for the fact that you don't have a professional looking at your manuscript. So that takes way more time. You can read PDFs, EPUBs, and edit them. Ooh, if your book is longer than 150,000, look at splitting it into two books. Ooh, is Aeon free? No. Editing or revising, that's the other thing. So Dana, one thing that I have noticed, tell me if I'm wrong. But one thing I have noticed is a lot of authors, when they're new and they they ask for an editor, but really what they're looking for is like a proofreader or slight revisions versus like a developmental editor. They're almost always surprised like, whoa, I didn't know an editor did that. So it's really hard to like, it, this is why like you got to have a whole conversation with the editor that you want to hire and have back and forth. And this is the other thing too. People ask me all the time, like, how do you find the best editor and whatnot? Get the editor talking to you and watch their energy. Like, yeah, experience matters and all that. Like, I'm absolutely. But a lot of times, especially like for me, I struggle. If someone shows me a book that they edited, I don't know what that means, what that's going to look like for my book because they edited a book in someone else's voice, not necessarily my voice, right? So it's like, it's great that they have experience, but what you, what you really want to know is, can they match your energy? If you're on a call, like on a, on a Zoom chat, for example, like a video chat with them, 
And as you talk, they're matching your energy. You go up, they go up. You, you bring it back down, they bring it back down. And they're matching your energy. If they can match your energy, they can match your voice. And that's really what the best editor for you is going to be able to do is highlight your voice and match it as they restructure your story. You can create notebooks. It converts handwriting into text. Ooh. Anyone know if I can make my own calendar and put it in an app for timelines? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, Naomi, very true. Like it took me forever to recognize I love revising. Still hate editing my own stuff, but I will revise it until I die. Yeah. It's, yeah. Or they, th or, or a lot of them tend to think of like the mechanical edit, which is, you know, really much closer to proofreading, but or the copy edit, sometimes they'll be like, oh, okay, I need to edit, but what they're, what's in their brain is a copy edit, and they don't realize that there's a line edit and a developmental edit. Which apps? Pretty much any app that you want. What I personally would use would be a spreadsheet because I love spreadsheets. Um, so if you're putting together your own calendar, I would just hop into like Google Drive and open up a new spreadsheet and just create a, a calendar that way. Um, yeah, that's how I would do it. And then you can open it on your phone or tablet or whatever. Also, Kimmy, don't be afraid of telling your editor straight out. Like, I don't know what questions to ask because I'm new to all of this. Like... Every good editor out there will help lead you through it because there's a really good chance we've all been <laughs> brand new too and didn't know what questions to ask. I have a blog post on the different types of editing and the different types of pre-launch readers. Nice. Where is your blog, Dana? Ooh. I'm going to go find it. You heard revision. Sabrina's been in revision <laughs> for months. <laughs> I love you, Sabrina. Still working on part two. Good for you. It will be clean for the editor to destroy later. <laughs> okay. To be fair, the editor's not going to destroy it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. I would it help y'all. Oh, it's the bus. I'm like, what am I hearing? It's the bus announcement outside. Where? No, no. No, what am I looking for? All right, I don't see it right now. Dana, actually everyone else. Oh, cool, okay. Would it be helpful, y'all, would it be helpful, helpful in the Discord if we created a channel that said like, 
um, um, vetted editors or something like that, where editors that members in the group trust, we have like a place where they post like the kinds of books that they'll edit. Would that be helpful or no? We did a podcast episode on choosing an editor. We didn't talk about voice, but it might be implied. I'll include that note in the presentation I'm giving later this month. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, seeing yeses. All right, cool. So I will try to get that set up today so that um, people like Dana can like, and other editors who we trust, they'll be invited to like, put up a little blurb of I edit this type of book and this type of book and blah, 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 and some basics and like their email address and stuff. So you can check right inside the discord for that. What's office hours. So office hours are a private zoom chat with me. Um, it's usually about an hour, usually because there's not very many people on it right now, but basically, um, you show up on, Right now it's on Mondays at 1030 Central um, and you sit on Zoom and whatever questions you have, they can be as specific about your book as you want. They can be about marketing um, and we do it on Zoom. So you have the ability, like, for example, if you're struggling setting up your newsletter, you can share your screen with me and we can walk through some of the technical things of setting it up. Sometimes depending on the question, I'll go like behind the scenes on my setup and I'll show you how I have something set up. And then we try to work out like translating it to you. Um, everything I know about marketing setup, frameworks, things like that, I will share quick little trainings, like miniature like workshops. Like I just learned this thing from Rachel Peterson. Here's how we're gonna apply it to you kind of thing. And I'll run through it and stuff. Lots of yeses. Yay. Now that Dana knows the difference between doctor and doctor, I would recommend Dana. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe call it author service provider so folks can recommend cover designers, formatters, beta readers, etc. Sure. That works. Yes. My phone is blowing up. Doctor Who. All right, so I have to put together a process because the only thing I want to make sure that that channel is invitation. So we don't get people like that. What's his name? The doc, the I almost said the doctor who no, the ghostwriter person doesn't like the one that who's been spamming everybody. I think we just kicked him. I don't want people like him coming in and like spamming the channel and being like, oh, I can get a client here. But like people like Dana, people that we have vetted, that we've worked with or spoken with or, ha you know, like we, un we know their credentials because we've hung out with them and stuff like that. We need a process where you can recommend people so that we can vet them and get them in there. So that might take me a little bit, but I'll get the t channel up today. So if you're a service provider, message me with the information or mess. You don't have to message me with the information, but message me and say, yes, I want to be a part of this. Yes, I want to be listed because I am accepting clients or whatever. 
you'll be able to post whatever you want in there, okay? You feel so lost. We'll catch you up. You're fine. Got distracted with Reacher. Is that any good? Later, getters. All right, Judith, have a great day. I have to go to my day job, too. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about, Jessica. He's still in there because I saw him say hey a few days ago. All right. So you know who I'm talking about. So, yeah. I guess he hasn't been bugging anyone because I told Alex, next time he bugs someone, just boot him. I don't know him. Even if I did know him, like, it's still just disrespectful. Who does that? Is it good? I saw the trailer, but I haven't seen it yet. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and just asking your questions and being the beautiful writers I know that you are. Go get all the words written, all right? And um, I will get day eight <laughs> up into the um, book writing challenge on Discord, and I will talk to you tomorrow. That would be like bugging me to let me write. Yeah. Not even bugging people to write blogs. Like, Jessica, the equivalent would be going into a blogger's group where people are writing their own blogs and being like, hey, hire me to write your blogs for you. Like, that's not, I don't understand ghostwriters who do that. Why would you go into a writing group where people are writing and learning how to write and be like, let me ghostwrite for you? That's not what they're, go find clients. Like, go do outreach. Go there's so many ways to go get clients. I know because I am overwhelmed with them most of the time. You do not have... Why? <laughs> anyway. All right, y'all. Thank you. It's good to see you too, Dana. Thank you so much. Um, have an amazing day, okay? Go get all the words written. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.